Now, they always said that Billy the Kid was one of the wildest gunmen out in the West, but he pales in comparison to the legend that is Doc the Kid. Ladies and wow. gentlemen, we have returned. Doc yep. the Kid is within our presence, and we shall bask in his story. My man, the Professor John Gotti, the king of RNG, the troll master, the data analyzing ninja. What basketball we had last night, boy. Oh, my it goodness. Was, it was, it was better oh, basketball than night one. Hands down. Way better. Um, I mean, it was... It was definitely apples to oranges. Um, I was not expecting both games to somewhat go down to the wire. Um, no, they both went down to the wire. <laughs> no, no, as I'm saying, I wasn't expecting both games to go down to the wire. Yeah. Um, I felt between Memphis and Spurs that somebody would pull away. Um, and wow, uh, I didn't even think that the score would be that close, four points within the last, what, four, four to five seconds left. Mm-hmm. Um, but let's talk about that game because it was really good. Way off. Bain with the putback. Maybe his biggest bucket of the season. DeRozan got it over Valanciunas. Lead down to six here and put it to bed. So Memphis with a win now. We'll take on the loser of our next game between the Lakers and the Warriors. And obviously, I've been forced yes. to eat. Let's let's get that out of the way. So yeah, let's get it out of the way. I've been you forced a lot of it. <laughs> and I don't th- and I don't think I said it on the show. I think I said it off the podcast, and I think that makes it worse, which means you know Valley Tunis has people bugging the phones at this point yeah. because I said that that guy was no difference maker he wasn't a star get him out of here he's not gonna make a difference and boy, boy I said, was i wrong you bugging <laughs> i was bugging um valley Tunis for the grizzlies 23 and 23 um they dominated when he was in the game mm-hmm. when he left the game spurs kind of came back but when he's in the game he dominated the spurs didn't matter who was on him whether it was Jakob Pertl, you know, you could put out – I think Zhang did a better job. Yep. But, I mean, he was giving Jakob Pertl all the business. Uh, I mean, just dominating him. But I enjoyed this game. It was a perfect – it was a perfect game to start the night. Like, these are two young, hungry teams, and I think – this is these are the type of teams that I believe the play in is really for teams that are good. You know, they're solid teams. They're just young. You know, they might have some inexperienced players, players who might be making the playoffs for the first time. Some veterans who might have moved to these young teams and are trying to carry them to the playoffs. Yep. But this Memphis Grizzly team, I know we talk about Valley Tunis and we talk about John Morant. But I said it yesterday, and this is something that I believed in since earlier in the year. But Dylan Brooks is a problem. Yes, he is. And I'm glad uh, that you said that because not a lot of people gives give him his love at all. Yeah. Yeah. He's a problem. Um, I think he is a a guy that you would want to build your franchise with. I know we talked yesterday about uh, Sabonis for the Pacers, but Dylan Brooks is a, a franchise player. Um, he can play defense. He can rebound. He can score from the perimeter and inside. He, he has the mid range game. He can give you anything you want. Um, and I think his play really catapulted the Grizzlies to the win um, as he was forced to guard the likes of you know, Rudy Gay down the stretch. He was on DeMar DeRozan. Yep. Uh, wherever they needed him, he was there. Um, and then shout out to Kyle Anderson, slow mo. You like, you like what I did there? Slow mo. I mean, that's what they call him. Um, 
and he getting he, one up on the on the team that uh, drafted him actually right getting one up but and he's been a really really good player for them despite his slow methodical Randy Orton style okay. <laughs> uh, he's been really really good veteran again that brings forth uh, that that edge that they needed now I thought this game was over no. like. <laughs> The first quarter was rolling. I was like, man, like the Spurs, as George Burke was saying, can't buy a bucket tonight. Mm -hmm. Nothing was falling. Um, It was a ridiculous run. I turned my head for a second to pop some fish in the air fryer, and I turned back, and they had brought it back in to a respectable game. But yes. they, they did not start this game good, Boyle. No, and they didn't. But so there's a few factors that helped them out. One of the main ones is the fact that uh, they shot 20 for 24 from the free throw line. So they got sure. to the line a lot. Mm-hmm. But here's something else, Doc, that I didn't know if you know this or not. And the people at home, both teams only shot 22 threes. We didn't have a 33 point attempt night. No one shot over five attempts for three that I know of. So I did I wouldn't have known the stat, but based and, on the way the game was played, I would I wouldn't I wouldn't put it past them not to have um, was, shot so many threes. And also it was under twenty turnovers for both teams to combine. Yeah, so that like, that's something that this, I wouldn't put past this them. This was and and you mentioned the commentators yesterday. This was a old school, eighty style basketball game, and that's what that's what made me love it so much more. This was like watching a blast from the past with some young, hungry, athletic basketball players playing the game the way we used to see it. And according to this, these stat numbers and and how close they were. Um, outside of the Grizzlies shooting 54% from the line. Um, it goes in comparison with what we talked about yesterday with the Hornets versus the Pacers, right? Yep. Spurs, 55 rebounds. Grizzlies, 56 rebounds. Yep. Like, that is where the game is won and lost. Turnovers, 8 versus 9. Yep. Yep. Points in the paint, 38 versus 48. So it's like, this is why the game was close is because – Statistically, they weren't getting dominated, but as you mentioned, where the Grizzlies fell short, free throws, the Spurs were able to capitalize on. Everything else, pretty close, 5 6% here, 10% here, but pretty close to keep the game up to this four-point win Absolutely. for the Grizzlies, uh, who will go on to face one of the next teams that we're going to talk about. Johnny? Are you ready for this showdown in California? James looking to get a running start now. Pass to Caruso. Caruso on the drive. Inside Davis for the slam. Lakers back up two with a minute and a half to play. Both teams. Curry ties the game. James, two defenders on him. To Caldwell Pope inside. He's tied up by Green. Throws it back up top. James puts up the three. Oh, it's gone. LeBron James from downtown. Shot clock expires. Baysmore to inbound. Poole coming free. Curry trying to get free. Lost the ball. That's it. The Lakers are in the playoffs. The Warriors need to play on Friday. I didn't care too much. I mean, we already knew who was going to win the game. We both, we both, I didn't said, know. we both said, we both said who who we knew was going to win the game, but we also said who whom in our hearts we really want to win. So this is what I'll say. What we got from the game is kind of what we expected from the Warriors. So the Lakers did everything in their power. They also came out like the Spurs, cold LeBron. I think I mentioned it. I was like, he's passing entirely too much. Is he hurt? The fact that people were talking about, oh, they only scored 30 points in the first half. Oh, my God. It was ridiculous. Um, It was really, really ridiculous. The fact that they got to 100, let alone 70, 80 points, was amazing Uh, because they did not look good. Nobody looked good. Nobody looked good. I mean, again, this is them now fully stopped. 
and it was going to take a first half. No, it was fully stocked with some spoiled products. Like it, it was that's really, a, really that's bad. That's like. That's a yeah, it was really bad. Um, I'm looking and I'm like, okay, they're missing layups. They're missing wide open shots. LeBron wasn't, he, I think the first five or six minutes, I think he was like one for five. Mm-hmm. Um, it was really, really bad. Uh, but then they turned it up. Steph wasn't really shooting in the first quarter too much. Um, no, I know he did. The end of the first half. No, as I was saying, the first, the first the beginning, he wasn't shooting a lot at all. Like he was... I felt like they were trapping him. They were double teaming. They were doing all kinds of things to take the ball from him. He, he, honestly, he was just getting everyone else in the game. Honestly, if you really, if you really look at it, like I did look at it. Yeah, like, but he wanted he to really shoot. Just, he wanted to shoot though. As soon as he started shooting. <laughs> yeah, he wanted to shoot, and you could tell he wanted to get in rhythm early. But they were trapping. They were double teaming. It was a perfect scheme from Vogel. Let everybody else beat them. Which in this situation, they were. Yeah. Um, I think I mentioned before this is, was going to come down to Steph, sure, but the X factor was going to be Andrew Wiggins, who should have been playing with a chip on his shoulder. Yes, which in the first half, he played with a chip on his shoulder. Big chip. He, he essentially locked, and these air quotes, folks, locked right. down LeBron. He did a good job. Got a block on LeBron. Uh, I think um, – Jordan Poole, I believe it was, almost dunked on LeBron. That's how I was like, there's something going on because, you know, LeBron usually don't be letting people just get all kinds of buckets on him. But I was like, he might still be hurt, but he's going to play through it because he's a future Hall of Famer and that's what is expected of him. So Wiggins did a great job. Draymond didn't bring anything point wise, but that was okay. He yeah, did his normal kind of what defense. He does. Yeah, that's kind yeah of what he does, he did his, his he did his rebounds. He did his assists. He played the passing lanes like a real champ. Yep. And pushed this game through. Played the passing limit. lanes. Also, shout out to the to Warriors in the first half, though they definitely played the heck out of those passing lanes. Right. Yeah, and it was mostly active very active, and and that's what they needed. Uh, it was, because it was Green, it was Wiggins, uh, Bazemore mm-hmm. got into it a little bit. Uh, uh, Jordan they didn't, Poole definitely got into it. Uh, they didn't Moon capitalize. With a, with a tip in the shot. To end, yeah, they didn't uh, capitalize on a lot of those, though. That was the only thing. They didn't capitalize a lot on a lot of those steals. Uh, I, I know Bazemore took a three once. I know um, there was a, a layup attempt that might have got blocked. Uh, they, they didn't really get a chance to capitalize on those um, poked balls. That's the only thing I would say about this game. And statistically, if we're going back to the way we have been analyzing this, it explains, again, why the game was so close. 44% for the Warriors, 40% from the field for the Lakers. Obviously, the Warriors, 44% from three, Lakers 10 for 31. I didn't think the Lakers shot. That that explained more about the Warriors because they got cold in the second half. They did. Free throw, 73 to 76. Rebounds, pretty even. Before we get to that, because okay. free throws is very important, Doc. And there's another of course. reason why that's important. Free throws, the Lakers got 25. The Warriors they got did. 15. Well, and again, that goes back to the the more threes and the more, I guess the more threes that they would have taken, even though it's just three more threes for the Warriors over the Lakers, I would say... And again, this is just my brand scope. I probably watched up to the third quarter and then I gracefully bowed out thinking like many other people, the Lakers didn't show up. They might be tanking to play the Grizzlies so they can play the Jazz. That's what I, you know me, I'll say it. That's what I started thinking. I fell asleep in the fourth quarter expecting to see (laughs) LeBron will the way for his team to win it. And lo and behold, (sighs) which I, I didn't like the fact that they said LeBron's dagger sends the Lakers to victory. So the that three happened with like a minute left in the it game. Did. It was still close towards the end of it. And I was like, that is not what we would call a dagger. Like, no. I'm thinking it was a buzzer beater. Like, but, you know what I'm saying? Like, well, again, they want to romanticize. What oh, romanticize. Yeah, big time. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, and that's, that's exactly what it was. It, what really hurt the Warriors towards the end was shot selection. 
true. And actually, yeah. and they're and they're a pretty they're a pretty. I'm gonna say young team. Yes. Steph, obviously, one of the older Bays Moore is a veteran, but they have some young guys out there, which I will say, those guys are hungry. I like Jordan Poole. I like um, what was that? I think it was Anderson out there. He played yeah. a, a few a couple of minutes. So they didn't. Re- yeah, they didn't really have a big. I mean, they only played eight players. Yeah. It was just rocket style. So for them to go eight a uh, eight man rotation, and I know the Lakers played like the whole the whole group. Um, for them to have an eight man rotation, only really one center. Yep. Technically, I felt, yeah, just one because. Uh, yeah, Kevin Looney. Yep. I felt they really really pushed them. I don't know if the Warriors will get past the Grizzlies. Um, I'm not 100 percent sure, uh, but it'll be an interesting game. Entertaining game game as well, too. Um, Yeah, and the fact that Giannis uh, Jonas Valanciunas. Oh boy. I mean, because we got to see if Doc's going to make the same statement again. I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to (laughs) say what I said. Dylan Brooks is a, a great player, and he's the guy I'll be watching. It'll be Brooks versus Wiggins. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, you got Morant, you you got Steph. I don't think anybody on the Warriors can really hold Valachunas. You know, um, I like Looney. He's always been a great player, but I'll have to see if he can actually step up and do that. Yep. Uh, but it'll be an interesting game. But today, we have the Pacers and the Wizards. Um, which I think that's going to be a really, really good game. And I don't want to overshadow that with the Western Conference, but I think we're going to see how this play-in tournament really gives us that almost college basketball feel. Yes. Uh, so we will we'll see how that goes. Um, will Sabonis step up? You know, will we get a triple double from Russ? Will Bradley Beal we'll, go we'll, nuts? We'll a, yeah, I mean that that you can you can hammer down on that one. Do you want me to deposit that one directly in the bank? Yeah. <laughs> um, but that's the play in tournament so far, ladies and gentlemen. I'm enjoying it. I'm definitely enjoying it. This is I, a a great breath of fresh air in the NBA. Something that yeah. they desperately needed. Big time need. Big time. Um, but I think that is all we have for today's show. Um, again, be sure to tune in tonight. Let us know who you have winning in tonight's game. Pacers versus the Wizards. We'll definitely go over it tomorrow. Um, and you know you found us today on your favorite podcast platform because we're on all of them. But if you can't find us on your podcast platform of course let us know but you can always go to www.debateamongstfriends.com <laughs> uh, but be sure to tune in tomorrow again every day monday through friday eastern standard time 4 p.m we're going to continue to give you the news the analysis and the reads and but for now we will bid you adieu the same way we always do when we go goodbye and to all a good night.